is being inspired instantly by our wonderful UCM president, uh, Reverend Dr. Eileen Augustine. She was supposed to be speaking next week on where the rainbow meets the road. So today it's where Eileen stands up and speaks is the, is the name of the, of the lecture. Please welcome our Reverend Dr. Eileen Augustine. Yep. <laughs> and I'll gladly speak for you next time. <laughs> so good morning, everyone. Good morning. good morning. And, you know, it's just a beautiful, amazing, windy, quite windy day, especially up on the mountain. And, you know, I'm, I'm you know, basically going to do the talk that I planned and something else that came up recently, which, you know, the universe, I, I find the universe absolutely wonderful in that. It's like, okay, we're going to change the plan, but we're going to give you a really cool twist on it, something you can work with. It's like, okay. So, rainbows. In different cultures, they mean different things. Uh, in, you know, the story of Noah, the rainbow was a promise that no matter what, no matter how bad things got, that it would never be thought better that we were not here, rather than to let us grow. And so I grew up always believing that that's what a rainbow meant. Now, in Judaism, it represents both the symbol of anger and patience held in balance. In the Norse myth mythology, the flaming rainbow bridge is that which connects Midgard, which is our world, with Asgard, which is their paradise. Now the really interesting part is, is that in the Amazon, rainbows are viewed as a very, very, very bad sign. Whoa. And in fact, it's believed that a rainbow will not only cause difficulties in pregnancies, but that they will actually cause skin infections. And it is said that if you see a rainbow, you keep your mouth closed and you don't breathe in and you have to hold your breath until you move past it. Because otherwise, you know, some of its illness is gonna come in. So people view rainbows in a lot of different ways. But the one thing that is consistent with a rainbow or that is believed to be consistent with a rainbow, no matter how much you walk towards it, it will always move away from you at the same rate. You know, the, the leprechauns, the, sorry, the leprechauns leaving a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Supposedly, it was the leprechauns that designed the rainbow that way so that no matter how close someone thought they were getting to it, that they would never find their pot of gold. But it would mess with the humans anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, some time ago, you know, I was driving in and I was not in my best space. I was not in my happy place. I was not in my Dr. Eileen space. And part of the reason for that was that, you know, I had heard that some things were being said about me that were not very nice, that were not very complimentary. And I was even thinking, you know what, I don't even want to go in. I, I, I just do not feel right. And I come down and um, that day there had been a problem on Bear Creek Road, shock. <laughs> so I had to go all the way through Scotts Valley and come down that way. And as I was coming down and, you know, just seeing the Lexington Reservoir, I looked over and to my left was a rainbow. And I thought, oh, that's cool, that's sweet, rainbow, okay, remind me to be cheerful. All right, thank you. <laughs> and as I drove forward onto 17, I noticed the end of the rainbow, instead of moving away, it was moving across. And the more I drove, the closer it got. And at the point where I was driving, it stopped onto 17, and I drove through the rainbow. Oh, wow. Was the part there? No. <laughs> Which, I mean, you know, on the freeway, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, well, you know, it is on the freeway, so it'd be kind of tough to get out and try to get it. <laughs> but I did find a treasure there. Because in that moment, I felt this flood 
of light and life and connection. And there was this little voice that has talked to me before that said it's okay because it was never about anyone else. This is about you and me. It doesn't matter what other people think or what other people say. It was never about their thoughts. I have my own relationship with them, but this, this is about you and me. Can you just rest in that? Can you go and be happy and be yourself and be everything that you want, knowing that you know there are those who you know may not like you, may not admire you, may not respect you, or what you do, that they may judge you. But this is about you and me. Can you take this moment that I'm giving you and rest in that? And I thought to myself and I said, yeah, I can. I can rest in this moment because I know I have the choice of the moment that I want to sit in. Do I want to sit in the moment where I'm spending time and my energy worrying about you know, what other people think? Or am I going to sit in that moment of unity with everything where I am one with the rainbow? Now many cultures believe that the rainbows represent the seven chakras. And, you know, yes, it is very cool to think about light and love. But what about those times when we're not feeling light and love? Do we pretend? Do we tell ourselves, well, I'm just going to feel this way? No, you're not. Because we are authentic beings. Because there are times when we don't feel good. There are times when we are not in our best space. I mean, I refer to it as my Dr. Eileen space because most people know me as Dr. Eileen. And I work with people and I help, with, help people and, you know, and I'm patient and calm and you know, always there with a serene smile, which I don't always feel. And for a while, I was getting kind of mad at Dr. Eileen because in that moment, it's like, you know what? You are asking me to be something that I don't feel like being right now. So do I choose between being you or being authentic? We all have to have that choice. We all have that conversation at some point. Am I going to be the person who I believe I should be, or am I going to honestly look at myself and say, you know what, I may be that you know, 75% of the time, 80% of the time, 90% of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time. But there are always going to be times when we're not. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that is healthy. It makes us human. It makes us able, when we can look at ourselves at those moments when we're not in our rainbow promise moment, if we can look at ourselves at that moment and say, you know what, still not so bad. And whatever I'm feeling right now, it will pass. You know, I'm in grief over the loss of my brother. And it's kind of a minute-by-minute minute thing as to how I'm dealing with it. Today's a good day. Today's a day when, you know, I remember us being kids. Today's a day when I set aside all the things that came up between us as issues and just remember how it was to have my big brother with me and to hang out and to tease each other. And in that space of the rainbow, where it met my path, I didn't go to it. And that's something that most people have a hard time grasping. There are times when, yes, we need to walk that walk and walk that path and go to where we need to be in order to find stuff. But there are times when we don't have to do a doggone thing. There are times when the rainbow will come and meet us. And it doesn't matter how, you know, what you believe or who you believe in or how you believe or how you practice it. We all have that moment where we didn't have to do a doggone thing and the universe just snuck up on us and said, well, you know what? Guess what? It's your turn. Tag. You're in it. You're going to have a moment. And I have been blessed to have so many of those moments 
where suddenly the world was a whole lot bigger than I thought, where suddenly my perceptions went from just me and my little spot in the universe to see the big picture. You know, I've told many of you is when I was in the Amazon and we did a, it was about nine hours into a 24 hour ceremony and ritual which basically constituted of me doing this for 24 hours. And the women were on one side of the room, all wearing white, and the men were on the other side of the room, all wearing white. And how they keep anything white in the middle of the Amazon when I can't even make it like to a, through a trip to Denny's without <laughs> something falling on me. But there they were, and all the men were on the one side and all the women were on the other side, and we were just swaying back and forth. And about nine hours in, there was this amazing experience of the two energies meeting. The divine masculine and the divine feminine. They were both and neither at the same moment. And I was in that moment of being both and neither. And it was like, oh my gosh, there is no separation. There is no difference. There is no you know, us and them, and you know, and now that we know that gender is an entire spectrum, you know, that taps into that. It's like, oh, wow. You know, and when I hear people like, you know, it's like, well, either, you know, a, a, a male talking about women or a woman talking about men, and I get very frustrated, and it's like, damn it, there's no difference. And then that little voice comes back and says, dial it back. They haven't had your experience, so how would they know? And if you're going to be able to share your experience, you cannot share it from believing that you're having to make them right, because they're not. I mean, you know, I've, I've never even heard of the concept of, you know, the color red in the rainbow thinking it's like, well, you know, I totally cannot relate to purple. Purple is all the way over on the other end. You know, purple and I do not meet anywhere at all. You know, in fact, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm base chakra, which of course is the most important chakra, because all the chakras think they're the most important. But, you know, and then there's purple going, it's like, well, I am the crown. I am the connection to the universe. Red is just so base. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Red is, is primal. It's, I mean, that's like basic safety, you know, not safety thing. But, you know, we're all about this, so red needs to be more like me. And red's thinking, it's like, you know what? Purple is just so full of itself. You know, we need to be safe. We need to understand our primal connections. We need to have those impulses. So purple should be more like me. Can you imagine red and purple trying to convince each other that they're wrong? <laughs> to me, it would be awfully silly. It's like my pinky and my thumb having an argument when I drop something. You know, it's like, oh, the thumb? What the heck? You know, like, well, pinky, it was all your fault. You know that. You know, this whole hand would be better if you would just move along with everybody else. It's like, you know what, thumb? You know, you're supposed to be the big deal opposable thing. You're not even mentioned the rest, you know, with the rest of us. You know, so it's your responsibility. You should be handling things. I mean, it's silly. It is silly. And yet, how often do we separate ourselves? How often do we clamp on to maybe one color of the rainbow and think the other parts of the rainbow need to be more like us? We are the rainbow. The rainbow is that idea, I mean, to me, it is a promise. It's a promise that we can be diverse, we can be different, and yet when we join together, we make something that maybe in a moment helps somebody to make it through a day that they're having a very hard time. How many times have you been having like a really tough day, a really bad day, and out of nowhere you look up and you see a rainbow and for some reason it's a little less bad of a day. And in that one moment, there's a reason to smile. There's a reason to go, oh wow, it's not so bad. There's something, there's a little bit of magic in the world. You know, for, and for me, Faith gives me that every time I need it. Every time I'm not in my good space or I'm irritated because I, again, forgot my keys somewhere or I didn't recharge my cell phone or, or whatever. When we have those moments that we need it most, 
Spirit is there. I call I I use the term creator. And creator is there. And Joan, I loved your prayer so much because it was all about that idea of love. Because to me, that is the ultimate expression. Love doesn't mean I'm gonna get everything that I want. You know, we've all seen like, you know, kids who get everything they want, and it's like, no. The, that's the badness. That's when they learn not to appreciate things. Because we always have to learn how to say no in a good way. I don't think there's a parent out there who, you know, at some point has not had this, you know, use the, because I'm the mom or the dad, that's why. Because at your point in your development, you can't understand why I'm telling you, no, if you jump off the roof, even if you're holding an umbrella like Wiley Coyote, <laughs> you're not going to be okay. <laughs> One of my neighbor's kids was like up on the roof literally with an umbrella thinking it's like, and nothing good is going to come from this. And the mom, you know, his mom was just like, no, you cannot do this. And, da -da -da. and you know, and she's trying to explain it to him. And I walked up, I said, get your fanny perpendicular off of that roof right now. Okay. <laughs> And later on, she said, you know, I was trying to find a way to explain it. I said, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you just have to say, you're going to have to trust me on this. Because you won't really understand the explanation. And, and for me, that's a lot how God works. In my life, there have been so many times when I just felt, you know, it's like, you know, it would be just so much easier if I could win the lottery. Because if I could, I could be as spiritual as you want me to be. And if I didn't have to worry about, oh, man, you just, just, you know, I would smoke it. It would just be, you know, you know, watch my spiritual dust kick up. If I didn't have to worry about having a job and paying bills and, and taking care of things and, oh, God, what has Sam eaten and how much is it going to cost the vet, me to pay the vet to get that straightened out? Oh, he got skunked again. <laughs> All of those little things, you know, how many of us, if we won that big $200 million lottery, would we go, okay, now I can devote my entire life to my path. I would travel the world, and I'd go to all these different places and study all this other stuff. I'd set up foundations. How many would set up like a foundation oh, just yeah. to give people free stuff? <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, okay, well, we're going to set up a foundation so that any child who is hungry has a place to go and get something to eat. Any person who is hungry, any person who is stressed, you know, you need treatment for depression, you need care for PTSD, it's free. You know, how many of us, probably everybody in this room would go, it's like, you think about all the wonderful things you can do for the world. And then we think, but I don't have that. I didn't win the lottery. I do have to worry about, you know, what bills are coming up. And there's that thought that that takes us away from our spiritual place. But the truth is, is all those things we're dealing with, all of those challenges, that moves us more into our spiritual place. Because it's through that that we understand, okay, you know, first off, God answers prayers in three ways. That was my, my favorite thing that my mother ever taught me, was the three ways God answers prayers. First, no. <laughs> because it's not good for you, and I know you want it, and it's not what's going to serve you. So no, I'm not going to give it to you. Or it takes away from someone else's autonomy and freedom of choice. So I'm not going to give it to you. And I'm willing to let you be mad at me while, you know, you take enough time to see that I was actually right. The second way God answers prayers is not yet. Because I understand you're hurting and I understand you're scared and I understand you want this problem to go away. And there's something for you to learn from it. There is growth for you. There is opportunity for you to become so much more than what you are now. I believe that you can come, you know, you can overcome this, even if you don't right now, even if you're not sure. And by the way, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be right next to you while we walk through this. And when you get out the other side, you're going to get what you want. The third way God answers prayers is I thought you'd never ask. And sometimes, you know, we do. And, you know, the manifestation work, that's why that's so important. 
um, the class this coming Tuesday that uh, Tom and Mary Gary are going to do, you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to be there. And I encourage everybody because it is about reigniting. It's very easy to forget the rainbow. It's very easy to get so obsessed in the puddle you're about to walk into that the rain has caused that we don't look up and we notice the rainbow is there. And it's about getting that spark back, getting that rainbow moment back, and being able to go, oh, okay, not only do I, was I able to spark it, I can call it back any time I want. I can call that back when I'm not feeling so good. And I can bring that into myself and choose that as my better story. You know, it's, it's interesting that, you know, when we start getting into routines, we get into the routine of our life, we get into the routine of our prayers, we can get, you know, I was, I pray every morning, you know, coming while I'm driving to work and, you know, coming down Bear Creek Road, again, shock. Um, but part of that is that, you know, and, and you know, I, because sometimes I, I get worried that I forget stuff, it's like, you know, honestly, Creator really, it's like, I know, know all the stuff you want to pray for. But for me, if I go through the prayer and it's like, oh my gosh, I forgot this, or I forgot that, or I forgot this. So, you know, I kind of have a pattern to my prayers. It, it takes about a half an hour, but driving here takes about an hour, so we're good. And, you know, when, when I get into that routine, and for a while I was in the routine, and then I forgot the feeling. I was, you know, it's like, okay, and I pray for this, and I pray for that, and I pray for this person. And then that little voice kicked in and said, do you really? And I stopped. And it's like, wow, I was saying words. I was saying very good words. But was I really? in that place of prayer, in that place. Because in my prayers, it's like, okay, thank you for this, thank you for that, thank you for this. But was I really feeling thankful? When I hit that rainbow moment, you're darn right I was thankful. I was humbled. I was grateful. I was renewed. And those moments come along to help us remember that. But we can help ourselves. We can help each other remember that. If somebody's going through a tough time, we can say, well, yeah, I'm not going to try to pull you out of where you are, but I can sit gently with you while you're in it, and I can hold your hand. You know, there was a thing that went around the internet, and it showed, like, two little stick figures, and one, you know, was saying, you know, one was under a blanket. Or no, they weren't under a blanket. It was like one was very upset, and the other one said, well, what can I do? And the other one said, nothing. And so the one stick figure thought, it's like, can I get you a blanket and build you a fort, a pillow fort? And so the person said, yeah. So the first stick figure builds a pillow fort, and it's like, is that better? Yeah. Well, what else can I do for you? Nothing. Well, and the stick figure thought, how about if I sit in there with you? And, you know, so you see the two little figures sitting there. You know, we don't have to say anything. We don't have to know what to say. We don't have to worry about saying the right thing because sometimes the right thing to say is nothing. The rainbow doesn't tell me. It's like, okay, cheer up. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. All the rainbow did was just be what it was. It shared that moment with me. And while I had the little voice saying, it's like, hey, pay attention to this. It was a silent union of a moment, of a matching of energy. And you can do that without saying a single thing. In fact, sometimes talking can really get in the way. Because we start thinking that, okay, this will comfort me, so that will comfort them. Or we start getting into the idea, you know what? They're wrong in what they're thinking, so I'm going to tell them what's right. That can be a problem. Yeah. Because what's right for us is not necessarily right for someone else. You know, when, you know, when people say, it's like, well, you know, I can, I can show you how to do this and I can show you how to do that. And it's like, well, you can show me a way. I don't think there's the way. A way is wonderful. I think that we should have as many A ways as possible. I don't know that there is the way. 
because that would mean that it's the same way and it will work for everybody and nothing works for everybody. As a chiropractor, I know that I can do the exact same adjustment a thousand times and it has a particular outcome. But there will always be someone who doesn't get that outcome. It's not because I did anything wrong and it's not because anything's wrong with them. It just means that it doesn't match up, which means we have to adapt, which means we have to listen. Listening first. You know, twice as many ears as we have a mouth. <laughs> Being able to be present. I listened to the moment with the rainbow. I listened and I kept listening even when I had passed it. Because then I started listening to me. And you know, that part of me was saying, hey, you know what? You know, yeah, yeah, you know, it's kind of a gut punch, but you know, we, we, you know not like this is the first time it's ever happened and it won't be the last. But why does that have to ruin us? Why do we have to give the power to somebody else to have us not feel good? And it's like, well, you know, maybe we could, you know, I could like, you know, tell everybody about it and tell them the person and all of this other stuff and then they're going to get talked about and that'll show them. What that'll show them is that they might have been correct. If they're talking about me that, you know, that I either lack compassion or I don't listen or whatever, you know, that I'm pushy or whatever, which, <laughs> yeah. So, but the thing is, at that point I have choice. And the rainbow helped me remind me of the choice. The rainbow helped remind me everyone has that light. Everyone has that spectrum. Everyone holds light and shadow. And it's not that anybody's wrong, it's just they've had different experiences. And that's okay. There's a term that people use a lot, which is triggered. And, you know, it's like, it's like well, this triggers me, hashtag triggered. Everybody gets triggered by something. And so that phrase has kind of just become something that people say. It's like, well, they triggered me. And there's someone who I got to know through a mutual friend. And he posted something on Facebook that, you know, a, a brief statement that I would like to share. Because when we think about triggered, we think that, you know, it's like, well, you know, that's just, that's just me. I've got every right to be triggered, which, I mean, you do. You've got to be the right. You have the right to be triggered, and you can say, it's like, hey, that triggers me. So this guy, he wrote, triggered. I hate when people abuse that term. I just woke up from a series of nightmares in which I was shot. The worst was when I thought I woke up and my wife whispered, it's okay, sweetheart, and as she stroked my, head, my hair, she then shot me in the head. Then I really did wake up, and she really did stroke my hair and hold me. It has been 32 years since I was shot in the face and chest. I know what triggered really means. Use that phrase around me with caution because I was almost killed by a trigger, and 32 years later, while overcoming alcohol addiction, everything comes back. I am learning not to hide behind the booze. Loud bangs scare the hell out of me. That is triggered, literally. I am sitting in a corner in a cold sweat 32 years later at one in the morning. That it's PTSD and triggered for me. And I get that many out there have their own triggers and PTSD. Please use those terms wisely. You know, after I read that, you know, I, I contacted him, I messaged him, and I said, I am so very sorry for what you went through and for what you continue to go through. And what can I do to help? Is there anything that I can do to help? He said, share it, please. As I said, we get very routine. We get very used to things. We get used to, you know, judging others because they believe a different way. We get used to saying that they're wrong. You got a yes on that? The universe. We get used to dehumanizing. We turn people into a group. We turn people into those people because they believe that. And I am right. We can never feel so right. <coughs> 
that then it becomes right to do something that we know to be wrong. We can never feel so certain in our beliefs that it's okay to say, well, my way is the way. Because the rainbow has many colors. And those colors balance one another. They don't bleed to one another. Red and purple are very happy because they each know that they are a vital part of the whole. They don't have to be the same in order to work together. They don't have to be the same in order to support each other. Neither one has to be right. We can take that lesson. And in that moment where all of that just kind of became very, very, very clear, and sometimes all we get is a moment, which means we've got to pay attention to each and every one of those moments. We've got to make them important. We've got to think about that. We've got to go, wow, what has this come into my life to teach me? Because I don't get many of these. The fact that I had this moment means nothing and everything. It doesn't mean it's like, well, you know, only more connected people have moments like that, which is absolute, you know, beings. <laughs> Everybody gets those moments. The question is, do we pay attention to them? How do we make them meaningful in our lives? How can we remember, maybe I can listen more and hear what somebody else's color has to say? Maybe my pinky and my thumb can remember they're a part of the same thing. And that as easily as they can make a fist together, they can open up as a hand together. They can reach out. They can help. You'll have your moment. You already have. And you'll have many more moments like that. So just consider that when your moment hits, how can you make the most of that moment? And one of the best ways to make the most of that moment is by sharing it, by talking to other people, not telling them, oh, you should, you know, you should hope to have this moment, but to say this moment happened, so think about it. James's song, James, I swear, your song put me right back in the rainbow. It was so beautiful, and it held the exact same energy as that rainbow, and especially the way you sang it. You know, the heart that you have, how you just kind of walked into this community and let us be a part of you, and how much you give and how much you support. And there's so many people here who give so much, and to each and every one of you, thank you. And even if this is your first time here, Thank you, because you've added your rainbow to ours. You've added your energy. This service could not have been the same if you weren't here. And I'm grateful for each and every one of you, honestly. I pray for every person who is here, honestly. And I just love the fact that you guys are this amazing, beautiful rainbow that I can see. And at some point, you're gonna be where that rainbow meets the road for someone else. And that's gonna be a very cool thing. So embrace life, enjoy it, enjoy the opportunities, because you never quite know where your rainbow's gonna meet the road. Thank you. <laughs>